Artifacts recovered from a shipwreck have undergone tremendous changes, uh, both physically and chemically. Uh, you know, you can see a big layer of marine concretion that's grown over uh, the metal objects, uh, the ceramic objects, and those are sort of the physical changes that you can see. But there's also been a tremendous amount of uh, chemical change um, in, in the actual fabric of the object, no, no matter what it's made of. So uh, the objectives of the conservation laboratory is to uh, take those uh, changes and, and reverse them in effect and, and uh, stabilize these pieces again so they can be uh, displayed in, in the atmosphere. It's no easy task. Uh, each uh, material type requires its own specialized uh, treatment and, and uh, conservation is a, a wildly complicated subject. One of the first things that has to be done uh, when objects are, are uh, brought into the laboratory is that they need to be kept wet. Um, they are, need to be put into storage tanks and uh, we maintain a, a series of uh, freshwater storage tanks. We keep the objects as they were found um, and, and simply put them into uh, these tanks and, and there they will, will hold nicely and, until we can get to them uh, for their, their uh, final treatment. Here uh, is uh, another example of a, a s storage tank. These are the uh, bombardettas, two of the bombardettas that were recovered, uh, simply put into a, a large trough, uh, pretty sizable trough, and uh, awaiting deconcretion. Because these objects were large and sturdy and, and had uh, plenty of iron remaining, uh, Deconcreting them was really a matter of taking a, a hammer and a chisel and, and uh, carefully and knocking the, the, the uh, outer layers that had formed over them, um, knocking that off. Um, the, the real trick on these particular pieces was cleaning the insides, which uh, took a, a lot of effort and uh, thought because, uh, you know, how do you remove all that heavy, hard, uh, it, it, concretion from a, a bore that's up to you know six feet uh, deep at the midpoint. Once the objects are deconcreted uh, they're put into this uh, chemical bath that you see here and then hooked up with a, a whole series of uh, wires looking like some crazy uh, Frankenstein like experiment um, but really what what's going on here is an electrochemical process that's designed to uh, purge the artifact of the salts that have uh, infused it over over the course of the centuries. Um, so by, by giving the artifact a negative charge and a series of stainless plates in that same tank a, a positive charge, hooking them all up to uh, a low voltage DC current, um, you, you actually expel the salt from the metal and, and over time, sometimes many years, um, the thing will finally be salt free and stable enough to display. The laboratory can be a busy, busy place, sometimes just as busy as underwater. Um, a lot of objects that have to be dealt with. Again, each material type um, has its own requirements. Uh, so. Uh, there's always something uh, going on in the laboratory, um, you know, some things being put into conservation, some things coming out, um, sort of a staggered system, so there's always something uh, going on uh, there. But uh, uh, this is, uh, again, uh, this phase of the project is, is key to success. doesn't always get the recognition in uh, the public mindset that the underwater uh, portion of, of archaeology does, but this is really really uh, uh, important. If you don't have stable uh, artifacts then what was the point of bringing them up? Because the conservation of uh, marine archaeological objects is, is so complicated really each treatment type could demand its own lecture. Um, I'm going to focus on one particular technique that's been particularly helpful on, on this project um, and that is the casting of marine concretions 
what, what we have uh, is a lot of these objects were iron objects and the iron has completely rotted away. We're left with nothing but the, the buildup that, that formed around the object over the years. So um, what we have to do is, is treat this concretion then as a mold. Um, you basically break open uh, the piece, clean out whatever rust might be inside, glue it together, and uh, cast a, a new plastic object from it. Here is a uh, piece of the concretion of the sword blade uh, from this sword I showed you earlier. Um, and you can see the conservator is using a, a fine blade to remove some of the the rust that's stuck to the uh, interior surface of, of what's now a mold. Uh, but that will happen to all these pieces. They'll all be cleaned and, and prepared. And this uh, crazy colorful looking thing, this is the uh, sword that was shown in the earlier slide. Uh, it's upside down now, but it uh, has been broken apart. All the parts cleaned up on the inside and then glued back together um, and then actually uh, plasticine clay used to uh, to seal up all the uh, the cracks as well um, but anyway it is now cleaned and ready uh, to be treated as a mold and liquid epoxy resin will be poured into the top um, and that will be allowed to harden um, and then uh, uh, the artifact will be ready to be ex to to be exposed a nice perfect fossilized copy if you will of the artifact here is our sword uh, it uh, the epoxy has has set uh, and there is a nice uh, plastic object underneath but the conservator is removing the concretion um, here a small uh, uh, air driven chisel is being used to just chip that away uh, very carefully uh, it, it almost is the size of a, a, a dental tool at the tip and, and sounds quite a quite a bit like uh, a dental tool now not every bit of the concretion can be taken off this way and and you know there are little bits that stick in the nooks and crannies and because this object is now a plastic object it's it's relatively fragile so you don't want to uh, be really aggressive in deconcreting it uh, mechanically. So here um, it's simply dipped into an acid bath to uh, remove some of the uh, uh, more stubborn bits of concretion and some of the uh, the rust stains as well. Um, this will all be rinsed and, and dried and then cleaned a little bit further afterwards. Here's a closer shot of the same sword. The uh, the grip of uh, of this thing and and you can see how the plastic starting to show through still some bits of concretion here and there that need to be removed but uh, you can really see this thing emerging um, and, and taking on its its final form one last go over with the uh, Dremel tool and uh, you know remove last bits of concretion and, and make sure this thing's uh, ready for its its final treatment which will actually be colorizing it so it will uh, match with uh, pretty closely with how it uh, originally appeared and then after uh, all of this uh, voila we see the the final product um, this is uh, all plastic this beautiful sword that we see here um, in many ways it's it's better than having the real thing it, we don't have uh, corrosion issues that we have to worry about in the future for storage but uh, also a lot of the surface details are better preserved than we might have found in in the original if the original piece were to have survived um, some of the uh, wood from the sheath actually uh, did survive and, and is still uh, attached to this this particular piece but uh, uh, all in all uh, a remarkable way of recovering something that really uh, just wasn't there anymore uh, and this technique has just been uh, uh, crucial to this shipwreck project.